Good morning, good morning, praise the Lord, everybody. Welcome to the Miracle Morning live stream broadcast. The purpose of these live streams is to strengthen the body of Christ. And we're praying this morning that this morning's message is going to be a blessing to you. Today is Friday, November the 8th, 2024 is the year. That's on the secular calendar. Now on the biblical calendar, today is the seventh day of the month of Heshvan in the biblical year 5785. It is just after 7 a.m. here Pacific Standard Time. We're live on Facebook. We're live on Instagram. I'm telling you, I have been up since four in the morning, but I have been just getting with God since yesterday concerning today's message and it has been a mighty mighty time in the presence of the Lord I have not slept much because the anointing has been so strong and there's just so much that God has been downloading to me to unpack I probably will not be able to unpack all of it this morning But I was telling my wife, I said, there's just like so much coming down from heaven right now that I'm praying, Lord, help me to unpack this before your people. Um, I was planning on doing the cost of discipleship part three. And when I went into my time of study, I was apprehended by the spirit of God. And the Lord said, that is not what I want you to share in tomorrow's broadcast. And I began to pray and press in and the Lord began to reveal to me what it is he wanted me to unpack and deliver this morning. (laughs) And by the grace of God, that's what we're going to do this morning. Amen. So the title of today's message is the ball is in our court. Now what? The ball is in our court. Now what? Let me just say this before I, as people are logging in here and before I begin to pray and unpack this morning's message is that God is changing my assignments for this next season of my life and ministry. As many of you I'm sure are experiencing this shift and this transition in this season as well. This is happening right now. Is that God is changing my assignments in my life and in my ministry in this season right now. And he's also put a book in my heart that he now wants me to write. And so that being said, my live stream schedule is going to change. Okay, so for this next season... I will be coming to you live once a week on Friday mornings like I'm doing today. Once a week, Friday mornings, 7 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. That's going to be my schedule for the live streams until God changes that. That's what I have been instructed to do. And so I will see you guys Friday mornings, okay? My wife will still be coming on Wednesday mornings and then... Brother Juan Martinez will be coming on on uh, Saturdays uh, as the Lord opens up his schedule to do that on certain Saturdays. And so with that being said, let's just let's just pray and then I'm going to jump right into unpacking this message that God has just put before me. And uh, I was typing even up until this morning. That's why. You know, just being in his presence and everything that God was having me, you know, write down and type down. And, you know, that's why we went live just a few minutes after seven, because there's just so much that God was just still revealing and he will continue to. But let's just go into a time of prayer as people are logging in. Father, we thank you this morning. We thank you, Lord that we get to enter into your gates this morning with thanksgiving and into your courts with praise, Father. We bless your name, Lord. Lord, you are good 
And we thank you that your love is faithful and it endures to the very end. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that you are mighty in all your ways. We thank you, Lord, that you have set a path before us. And we thank you, God, that this is a new day. That you are opening doors for your church. You're opening doors for your people. We thank you, Lord, that you are presenting us with amazing opportunities, Father. And this morning, Father, we just receive your love. We just receive your grace. We thank you, Lord, that everything that we do is by your grace alone. Brashkataya basata. We thank you, Lord, that you are sovereign. We thank you, Lord, for your sovereignty. We thank you, Lord, that you speak to us. You minister to us by your spirit. I pray this morning that your word would go out freely, unhindered, Lord. And we just thank you, Lord, for your goodness. We thank you, Lord, for your provisions. We thank you, Lord. That you are not done with America. You're not done with us, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that you've extended your scepter of grace and mercy to America one more time. And we worship you, Lord. We bow before your throne of grace and mercy, Lord. We declare that Jesus Christ is king over America. We thank you, Lord, that we are entering into a time and a season that has been ordained by you. We ask you for guidance. We ask you for direction, Lord. I pray this morning, Lord, that you would fill me with your fresh oil. That you would fill my brothers and sisters with fresh oil this morning as we get ready to receive and partake in the manna that you are releasing from heaven this morning, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. So the title that the Lord gave me is, The Ball is in Your Court. Now what? The ball is in your court. Now what? And the scripture that the Lord gave me to start this off is Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 1. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 1. The Bible says, To everything there is a season and a time for every purpose under heaven. To everything there is a season and a time for every purpose under heaven. Listen. The election is over and President Trump has been re-elected as the 47th president of the United States of America. It's over, folks. The election is over. The results are in. Donald Trump has been re-elected as the 47th president. And now wherever you stand with that, I just want to share this morning, okay, because the ball, the Spirit of the Lord spoke to me and he said, tell the people, tell my people that the ball is in their court now. What are they going to do with it? Okay. A few months ago, I had the opportunity to meet a guy that was on the show Shark Tank and He's actually the only person that's been on the show twice, okay? And I was talking with this guy for a good 30 minutes. We were just conversing. And there was a lot of things being said, but there was one thing in particular that really stood out to me that this man said to me. And this is what he said. He said, this is what he said that stood out to me. He said, most people work very hard to create and design their product. And they want to get on the show, right? They want to get on the show Shark Tank. They want to pitch their product to the investors. But most of them are not ready when the opportunity actually presents itself. This is what he was telling me. He said all these people that they try and they're trying so hard to get on the, the Shark Tank show 
They want to be put in front of the investors. They want to pitch their creation. They want to pitch their product to the investors. And they're hoping and praying that one of the investors is willing to invest in their product. Okay, but then he said something to me that really caught my attention because he said, most of the people that get on the show, they are not ready for the opportunity when it actually presents itself. And what he was saying was this, he said, they have not built the infrastructure to actually scale their business. They have not built the infrastructure to actually scale their business. In other words, they're, they're praying, they're working so hard for the opportunity. But once the door opens and the investors are ready to invest and expand their idea, expand their product, they find out, the creators actually find out, the inventors actually find out that they have not taken the time to build the infrastructure around their product to actually scale it now that the money is there, now that the investors are there ready to back up their idea. This is what happened to this one investor. He was telling me that his product actually got picked up by, by one of the investors on Shark Tank and he said, when the money was there to actually scale his product and, and now the influence because of the show was there to actually scale his product, he said he was backed up. I think it was like almost three years, he said. He was actually backed up like three years because he was not able to keep up with the demand that was now on his product are you, are you are you catching this and so the lord was showing me this yesterday he was showing me yesterday he said this is kind of like right now carlos is that when, when the church has been praying and fasting for trump to be re-elected as president the people of god were praying and fasting for this Okay, for Trump to be reelected, but now the election is over, and Mr. Trump will be our next president. Like it or not, he's going to be our next president. Okay, and now the church must now seize the moment and scale the opportunity that is now being presented to the church. Okay, because now we are going to have a president. And listen, this is not Trump worship, but the man is backing up the Judeo-Christian values more than any other candidate. And he's ready to back up Christians and he's ready to back up the church. So, okay. So what the church has been praying for has now been granted. The people have voted and I believe it is a miracle. I believe it is a comeback miracle. But now here we are, the door has opened. And so the question becomes, what are we going to do now? Okay, because rejoice for the moment, but make no mistake about it. Are we going to be able to steward this? Are we going to be able to scale the advancement of God's kingdom for the next four years, the way that God wants it done. And so I was reminded of a quote by Winston Churchill. And the quote by Winston Churchill, it goes like this, by Sir Winston Churchill. It says, to each there comes in their lifetime a special moment when they are figuratively tapped on the shoulder and offered the chance to do a very special thing, unique to them and fitted to their talents. What a tragedy if that moment finds them unprepared or unqualified for that which could have been their finest hour. That quote by Winston Churchill was bouncing around 
and my spirit this morning. Okay, because I believe that is exactly what we are dealing with right now. I believe that this is a special moment within our lifetime. If you're alive right now, which you are, because you're gonna you're either watching this live or you're gonna watch a, a replay. This is a special moment in our lifetime where I believe every believer is being tapped on the shoulder and offered a chance to do something very special for the kingdom of God. Something unique to what God has placed inside of you to advance his kingdom. Okay, And like Sir Winston Churchill said, what a tragedy if that moment finds you unprepared. For which, have, for which could have been your finest hour. These are the words that are resonating in my spirit this morning. I believe this is going to be our finest hour church. I believe this is going to be one of the finest hours. It's like an Esther moment. You were born for such a time as this. You, were you came into the kingdom of God for such a time as this. You have a man... In the presidential office, who will be taking oath, I believe January 20th, who is ready to back up the Christian values, okay? In the seat of office, of power over America, he's ready to back up the church. What are we going to do with that? I believe this is going to be one of our finest hours. God was, the way God was dealing with me yesterday was like this. He's like, Carlos, you came into the kingdom for such a time as this. The stage has been set. The man has been elected and soon he will be installed. And it's time. It's time. We are entering into a four-year window of time. Now, we don't know what's going to happen after those four years. But what we do know is that we have four years. We are entering into a four-year window of time. This is a prophetic moment within the church. This is a prophetic moment within the kingdom. The question becomes, do you discern it? Do you discern it? Do you discern the window of opportunity? Do you discern the prophetic moment that we are entering into right now? See, we got to be like the tribe of Issachar who had prophetic understanding of the times and the seasons who knew what Israel ought to do. We got to be like Issachar in this moment and we got we to gotta be able to discern that the time is at hand that there is a window of opportunity being presented to the church right now. And God brought this scripture to me in 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verse 9. 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verse 9. The Bible says, For a great and effective door has been opened to me, and there are many adversaries. Okay, A great and effective door has opened. People of God. In His grace, God has opened a massive door of opportunity to America. Let me say that again. In His grace and mercy, God has opened a massive door of opportunity to America. I'll never forget when God began to teach me about open doors and opportunities. Because the way that God taught me about open doors and opportunities as he was teaching this to me, he said, Son, I want you to understand that when I present an opportunity to you, it's like an elevator door in that you have to enter into the door before it closes. Okay, Opportunities have a lifespan on them. Okay, It's like the food in your refrigerator. There's an expiration date on that food. Okay. You need to eat the food before the time expires. You need to eat the food before the food expires. And God began to show me these opportunities that come, 
they're like elevator doors. If you're going to get into the thing, you got to you got to walk in while the door is open. Okay? You got to strike while the iron is hot. And so this is the 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 essence of what God was putting into my spirit yesterday is that this opportunity must be stewarded wisely. This opportunity, it must be stewarded wisely, okay? For a great and effective door has been opened to me. And then the Bible says, and there are many adversaries. There are many adversaries. People, look at all of the hell that President-elect Donald Trump has already been through and survived okay the hate the slander the accusations all this stuff regardless of what you feel about the man as a person i'm telling you what i see is it's undeniable that out of his grace and sovereign sovereignty god has decided to put his hand on this man and and anoint him for a kingdom purpose there's no way somebody can survive all of the hell that mr trump has been through and survived okay or the warfare that he has been through is tremendous tremendous warfare that he's been through yet the man has survived all of it. You, you cannot convince me that God has not put his hand on him. You cannot convince me that God has not anointed him for this purpose. Okay. I'm not even, we're not, I'm not even mentioning the two assassination attempts. Okay. I mean, that's obviously, you know, the greatest Thing that he survived you know two assassination attempts you know one bullet literally you know nicking his ear and it's like god has spared his life this is a miracle people this is a miracle comeback and you can't you there's no way you can look at this and say god has not spared his life there's no way you can look at this and say, God's not involved in this thing. No, no, no. God is involved in this thing. God is very much involved in this, okay? If you understand the prophetic in the way that God does things, you, you can see clearly why God has even put a grace on Trump's life to be a man of wealth. Because... His whole life has been set up for this. Because now he's in a place where he can't be bought. Money money is not a thing. To, he can't be bribed. Money is not... It's not a weak point for him. You understand what I'm saying? He's not, he's not doing this for money. He can make much more money as a businessman. He, he didn't take the presidential office to make money, okay? This is not about money. This is about a purpose. And I don't even know if he fully understands and grasps that the depth of, of the hand of God in his life, okay? Okay? And so that being said, this is a moment in time. This is a moment in history. I believe that even as this is a this is a comeback, a miracle comeback story for him to be reelected. I believe that there's a comeback anointing that's coming on God's people. I believe that there is a comeback anointing that is coming on the people of God. And it's going to trickle down from the White House onto the church and the people of God. I believe, even as the Bible says, 
in Psalm 133 that, that the anointing flows down, okay? The beard of Aaron. I'm not calling Trump a priest or anything like that. But what I am saying is that I do recognize that there is an anointing on this man. I, I can see it. He may not know God fully, but God can sovereignly anoint a person, okay? And I can see it and I can discern it. And I believe that that type of anointing is going to come on the Lord's church and it's going to come on God's people. There is a comeback anointing. And the Lord began to show me something prophetic about Trump and how his terms were not consecutive terms. He served a four, he served a term. Okay, Biden stepped in. Biden's going to finish out his term. And then Trump will step in again and serve another four-year term. From what I understand, Trump's only the second president to serve two terms, but not in consecutive sequence, okay? And the Lord began to show me something about this prophetically, that there are things that many people in the kingdom, there are things that you started... You started it and you felt the grace of God on the thing. You did the thing. But then all of a sudden you felt like it scaled back and you became very frustrated and you've been in a season of great frustration. And you've been asking God, God, where are you? I thought you were with me in this endeavor for your namesake. I thought your grace was with me in this project in this assignment but now it feels like you're not with me god and the lord began to show me something in the spirit that there are many people who you started things and god was very much with you but then he withdrew you into another season of discipleship into another season where he put you back on the potter's will and he molded you and did some more refining in the process. But now the Lord says, get ready because you're going back into the very thing that he allowed you to taste in the former season. That you're going back, but this time you're going back in a more mature level. You're going back with more refinement. You're going back. Somebody needs to say that God's taking me back. And when I say back, it's not back to the past. It's like, it's like the movie, you're going back to the future. Okay. How many of you can catch this, what I'm saying right now, but the spirit of God, if this resonates with you, this is what God is showing me. God began to show me that there was some time of frustration. Okay. Because you're like, you were expecting the thing to flow into another season. But in fact, it was a season of the potter's will. But now God's going to put you back out there. Okay. And you're going to experience his grace and his mercy on the thing once again. And you're going to go forward unto completion this time. Amen. I think I explained. I think you guys, I think. I'm doing my best to communicate what the Spirit of God was giving me to share. Okay, and so then the Lord began to take me into Isaiah 45. And many of us have heard this, and we've also heard it attributed to Donald Trump to many times. But Isaiah 45, and I, I'll tell you, when right before he was elected the first time, the Lord gave me a dream and in the dream, it was a prophetic dream. And in the dream, there was, there was crowds of people and the people were chanting, here comes Cyrus, here comes Cyrus, here comes Cyrus. And then in the dream, next thing you know, it was Trump. Trump was walking and they were chanting. The people were chanting, here comes Cyrus. And so I do believe that there is a Cyrus type of anointing on the man. Okay, and it, it, it would do you well to put aside how you feel about the man personally, at least to honor the fact that God has put an anointing on him for the kingdom's sake, to glorify 
the, the kingdom of God, to advance his kingdom, okay? And so in Isaiah chapter 45, I'm going to read verses 1 through 6. The Bible says, Thus says the Lord to his anointed, to Cyrus, whose right hand I have grasped to subdue nations before him and to loose the belts of kings to open doors before him that the gates may not be closed. And then it says, I will go before you and level the exalted places. I will break in pieces the doors of bronze and cut through the bars of iron. And I will give you the treasures of darkness and the hordes in secret places that you may know that it is I, the Lord, the God of Israel, who calls you by your name. For the sake of my servant Jacob and Israel, my chosen. Now get it. Get what God is saying here. God is saying, look, I've called you and I've chosen you. But, but here's why. It's for the sake of Israel. It's for the sake of my people. Okay, so... So regardless of what you think of the man personally, understand that God has put an anointing on the man for you. It's for the church. That's why God did it. It's for you. It's for me. Okay? So for the sake of my servant Jacob, and Israel, my chosen, I call you by your name. I name you, though you do not know me. Okay? I am the Lord, and there is no other. Besides me, there is no God. I equip you, though you do not know me, that people may know from the rising of the sun and from the west that there is none besides me. I am the Lord, and there is none other. Now, get it. Look at, look at what God is saying here. Look what he's saying. He's saying, I am the Lord and there is no other. Beside me, there is no God. I equip you. With what? The anointing. I equip you. Okay? I equip you though you do not know me. You don't know me. I equip you though you do not know me. Okay? Right there, people can say, there's no way. There is no way. Carlos, there's no way that God would anoint a man like that. No, no, no. It's very clear. God anointed a Persian king by the name of Cyrus who was not a believer. He did not know Yahweh. He didn't know him. God sovereignly anointed him for the deliverance of his people. Now, I believe that Trump is coming closer and closer to knowing the Lord personally. And I think that we need to pray that during these four years, the man would become spirit filled and become a born again believer filled with the spirit of God born again. Imagine that. Okay? God's hand is not short. His his arm is not short. If God can redeem people like me, if he can redeem people like you, God can redeem a man like Mr. Trump. Amen. And so imagine Imagine going through the type of warfare that he's been going through. That's why God's been having so many pastors pray for him and cover him. Because he doesn't know how to fight spiritual warfare. But at least he's smart enough to surround himself with spirit-filled preachers who can cover him. Okay, And I believe it's the duty of every believer, the Bible tells us even, to pray for your leaders. So, so whether, whether somebody likes the man personally or not, it is the duty of the believer, according to the word of God, 
to pray for our leaders. Okay? And I believe we need to pray for the man and cover him. Okay? Uh, he's been given a mandate from heaven to serve the church. Amen. And there is much work to do. The Lord began to speak to me. He says, there is much work to do, Carlos. Those of you that just joined, you're going to have to watch from the beginning because I shared a, a, a story of, of a man that I met who was on the Shark Tank show and his whole thing he was telling me was that people get on the show and they actually get an investor that wants to back up their, their product, but they're not prepared to scale their product. Okay, and so this is what we need to pray against right now is that Yes, rejoice, but this is not a time to rest. Okay, this is just the beginning. This is just the opportunity to do the thing. That's what it is, okay? This is the opportunity to get to work for the kingdom. And so God gave me Matthew chapter 9, verses 37 and 38. Matthew chapter 9, verses 37 and 38. The Bible says, Jesus was talking and he says, Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is abundant, but the workers are few. Therefore, pray to the Lord of the harvest to send out workers into his harvest or into the harvest field. Now, this scripture, God highlighted this scripture and put it right into my heart for this time and season that we are currently in. And I'm going to read it one more time. You need to write this down. Matthew chapter 9 verses 37 and 38. Jesus spoke to his disciples and he said, The harvest is abundant, but the workers are few. Therefore, pray to the Lord of the harvest to send out workers into his harvest field, okay? We need to pray, people of God. This is the time to pray this scripture right here. This is the time. Now is the moment. Now is the time. You were born for such a time as this. You were born for this time in history. You've come into the kingdom for such a time as this. The American church must begin to intensify in prayer now. Okay? Why? Because what happens in America influences the world. And prayer will be the key. The Lord spoke to me said, Prayer will be the key. Prayer will be the key. The church is going to have to step it up. It's time to turn up now in prayer. And God says, begin to pray now. Because the harvest is abundant. There is a generation that does not know God. And, the, and hell was working to to push agendas into high schools and into the hearts and minds of a generation that would pervert them and distort them and bring confusion. The devil was up to something, but God just checkmated him. And God says, now is the time to begin to pray that God would send out workers into the harvest field. Now is the time, God says, I'm hearing them now, says now is the time to roll up your sleeves and get to work. There's a four-year window, and what God was showing me was this. I was writing all this stuff down because what God began to show me is that if the church begins to intensify and double down in prayer, that this has been a time where God is ready 
to open up the floodgates of heaven. He's ready to pour out his spirit upon a generation that does not know him yet. The Lord says, pray for revival. The Lord says, pray for the awakening that the prophets have been prophesying about. This is your moment. This is your time. A grace has been granted to you. America, a grace has been granted to you. People of God, people of God, a grace has been granted to you. A door has been opened. But just like the scripture says, the door has been opened, but there are many adversaries. Now, the devil is hell-bent right now because he lost. And don't think for a second that the devil's just going to throw his hands in the air and give up. No, no. There are many adversaries. There will be many who will oppose the kingdom agenda and the kingdom purposes that are going to begin to unfold upon a generation. But the Lord says, this is not the time to relent. This is the time to press into prayer. And the Lord says that you need to pray. We need to pray for the protection of President-elect Trump. That we need to pray. Pray against any further assassination attempts. Specifically pray against assassination attempts on the soon to be president. Okay. The Lord says, pray for revival. The Lord says, pray for awakening, pray for the outpouring, pray for the workers to be sent into the harvest field. He says, pray that America would turn back to me, to the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. People of God, are you hearing what the Lord is saying this morning? This could be your finest hour. You don't want to look back five years from now and wish you would have turned up for God when God presented the opportunity. And I believe, yes, we need to hold our officials accountable in their offices, right? That we we voted them in. Now we need to hold them accountable. But I also hear the Lord saying that the church will be held accountable for how the church stewards these next four years. These next four years, I believe, are going to be detrimental for the trajectory of the church in America and for the nation at large. These next four years are going to set the stage for a generation that is in grade school right now. For the move of God that, oh my gosh, I'm telling you, I have not even been able to sleep the way the Spirit of God came on me so strongly yesterday, and I've been under this anointing yesterday and all night and all this morning. And there's a spirit of excitement. It's like a a ready, set, go time. Ready, set, go. I want you to think about when you got saved and when you got born again. I submit to you that God had this season in mind. God knew he would come to you and redeem you back then so that you could be mature enough to steward this season that we are about to embark upon. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I believe I've said what God wants me to say for this morning. And I pray that you guys, and I'm going to begin to pray, but I'm praying that the, the hearts are open to receive the word of the Lord. I'm praying that the minds are open to receive the word of the Lord. This is not about ethnicity. This is not about anything in the natural. This is about the spiritual status of America. 
This is about what God is doing and whom God has sovereignly put his hand upon to work through. And the church cannot afford to go to sleep for the next four years. Because they're going to wake up, the church will wake up to a very rude awakening at the end of these four years if we did not roll up our sleeves and get to work. And before I pray, my wife, I want to share, the Lord is telling me to share this even, is that last night we were having dinner with another prophetic couple. And they began to share to us, the husband began to share to us that he had a dream this week where he saw President Trump and, and, and Putin of Russia sitting at a table and having a discussion and the essence of it was that there would be a time where wealth creation would be available. So with the, with the workers being sent out to the harvest, this is going to be a time where God is going to put provisions before you to do the work. Not provisions to floss and show out. No, but provisions to do the kingdom work. Those that are serious about doing the work of the king, God is going to now put provisions before you to do it. He's going to put put provisions in your hand to get the building. He's going to put provisions in your hand to get the studio. He's going to put provisions in your hand to do the thing that he's called you to do full time. But you got to move as God tells you to. Not a moment sooner, not a moment late. Just like the elevator door, when it opens, jump in. But God is going to do it. God is going to do it. God's not going to call you to do something and then not give you the provisions to do the thing. Amen. This will be a time and a season of evangelism. God is reminding me now I've had dreams. Seven years ago, I, I was having dreams of great outpourings of the Spirit of God. And God says, God is telling me now, those dreams, Carlos, were for this season that's about to happen in these next four years. All of those dreams that God has put inside of you, the thing that He summoned you into the kingdom for, get ready. Get ready. You didn't, you didn't spend all those times in consecration and in study in vain. You didn't do it in vain. God was getting you ready. And the stage is being set. And it's time to put your jersey on. I see a play, I'm seeing right now in the spirit of my mind, uh, an at, like an athlete in the locker room putting his, his jersey on and it's time to get in the game. It's time to do the thing. I like what one minister said. He said, Christianity is a full contact sport. It's time to get in the game. Okay. So I think you guys are catching the heart of what the heart of God for this hour is that it's not a time to sleep and slumber. It's a time to roll up the sleeves, get to work, and pray to, the, pray to God, pray to the Lord of the harvest to start sending out the workers into the harvest field, to cast the nets far and wide, to bring a generation of souls into the kingdom for such a time as this. This is it. We've seen... We, we, we've seen the, the movements of the past, the Jesus people, these different moves of God, these outpourings of His Spirit. We are now embarking. And God has, has and, and the people have voted, and God has put a man that's going to back this thing up from the White House by the word of His mouth. 
and the signatures of his hand. He's going to back up the advancement of God's kingdom on the earth. In America, and what happens in America is going to influence the world. This is it. I'm seeing stadiums. I'm seeing crusades. I'm seeing mass evangelism. You were born for this. You were born for this, people. Prayer is the key. Prayer is is the key. Amen. I'm going to begin to pray. Father, we just pray right now. And we thank you, Lord. Come on, pray with me, saints. Come on, pray with me. Father, we pray this morning. And we thank you, Lord, that we discern the time. We discern the season, Lord. And we thank you, Lord, that we discern that this is a unique and special moment within our lifetime. And Lord, we discern that this is a time that can be the finest hour of our lives, Lord. That we're entering into a time and space in world history that you have ordained for a move of your spirit upon the earth for a harvesting of souls. And Lord, we just pray right now. We lift up President-elect Donald Trump. We pray protection over his life, Lord. We pray right now, Father, that you would protect him, you would protect his family. We pray that you would give him the strength and the physical and spiritual stamina for these next four years to endure everything that he's going to have to endure as he takes his stand. But we pray as he stands, Lord, we will be praying and backing him up spiritually as his hand is is, gr is gripping pins and signing things to pass that will, that will be an aid for the work of preaching the gospel. And we pray right now, Lord, that, that you would surround him with men of wisdom, men who are filled with the Spirit of God, men who have the Spirit of counsel. We pray, Lord, that you would even assign prophets to him. Prophets, Lord. Prophets that he would call and he would summon them to the Oval Office to meet with him. And that they would prophesy to him the word of the Lord concerning the direction of America and what he should do. But I pray that prophets would be connected to the president in these next four years, Lord. We pray for revival, Father. We thank you for revival fire that's coming to a generation. Revival fire that's coming to America. We pray for an awakening. But those who are, are, are asleep spiritually, that there would be an awakening, Lord. And we pray for this outpouring that you have, you are ready to pour out your spirit upon the earth like never before. The things that, that Bob Jones and the things that, that the prophets of, that are in heaven now, the things that they saw, that you showed them that would come in a future time, Lord, that this is that hour. This is that time. This is the time that you would pour out, Lord. And I pray right now that people would be focused, that people would not be distracted, but that they would be ready to roll up their sleeves and get to work. We pray, Lord, that you would send out workers into the harvest field, Lord, that you would send them out, the preachers, the teachers, the evangelists, the prophets, the apostles, the pastors, Lord, and those that just have a heart to do the work of the kingdom, Lord. We pray that you would send them out with a testimony in their mouth, Lord. And we pray, Lord, that this would be a time when America would make the choice to turn back to you. That America would turn back to the God that made them and blessed them. That America would turn back to the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Lord, that America would turn back to you, Father, to Yahweh, to, 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 to the God that we say even on our, even on our uh, American money, that in God we trust, Lord, that we would turn back, to, we would turn back to who we say we trust, in God we trust, in the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob we trust trust lord and we thank you that this will even be a time 
Well, you will begin to prosper your people financially for the purpose of advancing your kingdom. We thank you, Lord, for that Deuteronomy 8 and 18 anointing that's coming upon your people, Lord. The anointing to create wealth, the anointing to, 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 to establish your covenant here on the earth, Father. We thank you this morning. This is our finest hour. This is our finest hour. Let us not be distracted, Lord. Let us not be distracted. I pray for focus and mental clarity. I pray that we would not squander the next four years. But at the end of these four years, we would have a mighty testimony. Millions upon millions, billions, soul harvest, Lord. And that your people would be the head and not the tail. That there's a changing of the guards. That you're raising up the prophets. You're raising up the evangelists and the apostles. The pastors and the teachers, Lord. To do the work whereunto we've been called, Lord. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your anointing, Lord. We pray that you would give us the wisdom to steward these next four years. According to your plan and according to your purpose. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Well, I've said what God wanted me to say this morning. <clears throat> amen. Whew. I haven't... I haven't been uh, even mentioning anything about partnership. But I do feel the Lord prompting me this morning to give people the opportunity to partner with us. If anybody feels led by the Spirit of God to sow into this ministry and what God is calling us to do, you can go to our website, which is www.roaringeaglesministries.org. The website, you'll see the website. It's on Instagram. It's on Facebook. You can go to our website and click on the giving tab and you can partner with us there through PayPal via our website, www.roaringeaglesministries.org. Listen, I'm under this thing. I'm under this anointing, and I pray you guys received it. Share it with somebody if God's telling you to share it. Uh, just be obedient. Share the stream with someone, and keep these things in prayer. We have a lot of work to do. We have a lot to pray. The church has to immensely step it up in prayer now, the Lord says immensely the prayers in the church must intensify i'm seeing all night prayer vigils i'm seeing prayer meetings but i'm also seeing the glory of god breaking out in these prayer meetings in the mighty name of jesus i'm gonna get off now i'm gonna get off okay because i don't want to keep going but I, I bless you guys we'll see you guys my wife will be on wednesday then I'll be back on Friday with another, another word from heaven. Amen. God bless you guys. Remember, you were born to roar and destined to soar.